Hi, I'm going to introduce SQL in this video and talk about how to use a really important statement within SQL, which is the SELECT statement. So as an acronym, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is another coding language, so to speak. It's not a programming language, but it is used to interact with databases because a query in this context is really a question asked about a database or a question posed to a database, if you want to think of it that way. And there are loads of statements within SQL. There are different types of queries you can do. The four basic ones are creating, reading, updating, and deleting. And really, select is a query for reading, for retrieving data from the database. Which is probably what you think about when you think of having a database, you're looking for particular information within it. So if you are searching something and has a database, you'll use a select query in most cases. And select in terms of its syntax has three main clauses. So you've got the select part of the statement with three other main clauses along with it. So from, where, and order by are clauses. You don't need those always. You might only have select and from say, you might have select from where sometimes. You can kind of switch out those as you need them. But select and from for our purposes are going to be needed. Where and order by it will depend on the scenario. So before you start panicking about learning a brand new language, this is not as much syntax to learn, but you have got a low, you have got to know this structure. So select fields, the first part of an SQL select query is effectively asking what data do I want? The fields are the columns, remember? So what parts of the database, what parts of the table do I actually need? From table is where you write down where the data is held. So you write down the table name or table names if you've got multiple. Where is used to narrow down the data returned. So how should you filter it? Which records are you looking for in particular? And order by, as the name would suggest, is dictating how it's shown. Are you showing it in alphabetical order? Are you showing it in uh, descending order, ascending order? Um, whether it's alphabetical or numerical will depend on what the field specified is. You've got to write down what field you're looking to order. If it's a numerical one, it'll be numerical, obviously. If it's text, it'll be alphabetical. But you could say if it's ascending or descending. Right, so let's look at three examples of using a combination of these clauses with one table. We'll look at how you can use select of two tables in the next video. So really simple. Let's look at a table like this. A table called albums with some different albums who won awards, I think I, I got that data from. Now, we've got four fields here, ID, title, artist, year. We've got five records and the primary key is likely ID in this table. So let's say my query, my question is, what are the album titles stored? I want all of the album titles held in this table. So what you would do if you were using SQL, you'd write a statement like this, select title, from albums. So select title is specifying what field I want. I want just the album titles, not ID, artist, or year. From albums is needed to tell the database where to look, what table to look in. The table is called albums. And the semicolon, you may, you may not need, but often in a proper database management system, you'd put a semicolon to end your query. If you leave it off, not really a big deal. Likewise, capitalization or things like select and from is not that important. I would capitalize it if I was you. And make sure the capitalization of your field names and your table names matches, but the other capitalization is not as important. So if you ran this query with this table, you'd get this result, all five records, but with only one field, which is title. And I think it's important to realize select will give you back a table which has your requested records with only the fields you specified in the query. So that's a simple one. Let's look at a second example, which is a little bit more developed. Now let's ask, what are the albums made after 2015? Show the title and artist with the newest first. Okay, so a few things here. In terms of the fields we need, we need this time not just title, we want title and artist. So it's going to be select title, comma, artist and we want albums made after 2015. So we need to have a condition and we wanna have the newest first, which means we need to have an order by clause. So this is what it would look like. 
We've got select title comma artist. If you've got more than one, either field or table, you separate them with commas. So don't write and or anything like that, just have commas, title, comma, artist, the two fields I need. I've still only got one table, so from albums is as it is. But now we've got a where clause. So a bit like an if statement really, we write a condition after it. So where the year is above 2015 is what it specified. Made after suggests it's 2016 onwards. And you notice how year is not one of the ones I selected. That's fine because year is within the albums table. I can still access it despite me not actually selecting it. And finally, we're going to order by the year in descending order. That gives us the newest first. So this would be the query result, just two records and the two fields are specified. We don't have Adele because 2015 is not bigger than 2015. And John Baptiste comes first because that has the latest year. So when you have something after your field in order by, desk is short for descending and ask is short for ascending. And again, I've put a semicolon at the end of this long select statement. Not essential, I would say, in most cases. Not a bad thing to put in just to be on the safe side. This is important if you've got more than one in the same bit of text. I've put this on four different lines. It could be on one long line. It doesn't actually matter as long as you've got a semicolon to tell it when it's done. In an exam, that's obviously not nearly as important. Right, using a table from a previous video, let's look at another example with a new set of data. I've got a teacher's table here with four teachers and four fields. And my question is, what are all of the details of the teachers with the codes ABN and TBN? Well, if I was constructing an SQL select query here, first things to think about is what comes after select? Select what? Well, it says all of the details, meaning I need all four fields. Now I could go select teacher code, comma, name, comma, department, comma, lessons, but not a great use of me writing down. There is a shorthand, which I want you to know about, which is a star. So the star or asterisk is shorthand for all. The asterisk in SQL at least represents all. So when you see a star, think all. So really it's saying select all from teachers, select all fields from teachers. These are called wildcards. A wildcard is where you've got a symbol representing something else. And there are a few more, but this is by far the most useful for select. I've still got to do from teachers to tell it the table. But now my where clause, I'm only looking for the codes ABN and TBN. So I've got a more complex condition here. I've got where teacher code equals ABN or teacher code equals TBN. Very similar to an if statement in programming. Now, Despite my question saying and, I need the or operator, which you can do in SQL and make sure it's capitalized. So Boolean or is where it's one or the other. It doesn't make sense to have teacher code equals ABN and teacher code equals TBN because you can't have both. They're a primary key, teacher code, so you can't have two at the same time. So it's got to be or. And this will give us just these two records, the ABN one and the TBN one with all four fields.